Welcome to the first of my soap making series. Today I'm going to be making this yummy looking confetti soap that is frosted and obviously is meant to look yummy. So let's start off by measuring our hard butters. I'm going to be using a heat transfer method here because I don't really care too much about um, my butter trays. I call it butter my um yeah it's my soap butter <laughs> my butter tracing fast so um the method i'm using here i usually use different methods depending on what i'm trying to achieve as my end result or how fast i want my soap to move so here i'm just going to be using the heat transfer which means i'm going to be using my live water to melt my hard butters before and then i do that before i measure my soft oils which you know it's not intended for a beginner so please if you're a beginner just ignore my method and just use something else so here these are my hard butters i'm using shea butter coconut oil and some lard because lard gives you the creamiest bar ever at this point i will go ahead and measure my water before i then suit up for safety really <laughs> and i learned those terms from um that term from Brambleberry, like uh the soap queen lady yeah she always says suit up for safety so here i'm wearing my gloves before i start to handle the light and all the caustic stuff and then i will also put on some goggles yeah there uh -huh. and here so i'm going to be measuring out my light in a, in a separate glass before I mix that with my water, you should always pour light into water and not the other way around. So here, and then it's a well ventilated area, so I'm not inhaling any fumes. And even if, trust me, I always hold my breath <laughs> just at this point. So here's what I said, I, I'm pouring it into the butters to melt it because it's it's hot right it's an endo it's open it's oil it's endo honestly I, I don't even remember <laughs> but it gives off heat and so that heat is enough to melt the butters and that's the method I quite like sometimes especially when you know I just don't really want to take that time to melt oils and make sure the temperature is where I want it to be before I start soaking this is just a really easy method for me and i really quite like it i don't i don't use this method when i do like intricate designs but when i do like designs things that don't require any you know swirling i tend to use this method so here i'm just melting down my oils Now, once that is melted, I pour in and measuring my olive oil. This, like I said, is not a beginner style, trust me, because you can, at this point, make a mistake. And this is just me taking risks, because I like to take risks. But, like, you know, you can actually over pour at this point. So, it's just best to measure in a, in a separate bowl. Don't, don't copy me, please. This is my little disclaimer. So, here, this is my castor oil. So I'm measuring my soft oils now and then I'm just going to mix it up and we'll get to the fancy part of my soap making. Next, I'm adding in my fragrance oil and I think this is a really lovely, nice rose fragrance oil. It's a damask rose. I absolutely love it. It holds really well in cold process soaps and, you know, it lasts long 
the soap literally the, the soaps have cured as at the time i am actually recording this voice over and trust me the smell still holds perfectly next i'm adding some titanium dioxide and then i will go ahead and add some color and i'm using yellow right honestly i don't even remember the name of that because I, I recorded this about a month ago actually and i just didn't get to it so now that i, I, I don't remember but it's a yellow color I, I wanted it to be like a pastel yellow and so I put in the titanium dioxide to make it a bit whiter before putting in the yellow. Before I add my yellow coloring, I decided to take out the bits I'm going to be using for my first stem. And so I'm just measuring some out right now. And that's just going to sit down there. And I will use that for my first stem. And then next, I will then go ahead and add my color. Right, you can see the yellow there. I really even felt like I probably didn't even need to put the white in the actual soap because it, it i don't know i felt like i wanted it to be a little bit of a deeper color but i mean i still didn't really mind the way it turned out it still looked okay but i wanted it to be a bit of a deeper yellow so here just added in the color and then i'm going to go ahead and add some soap shavings here because this is a confetti soap right <laughs> So yeah, I've just added the soap shavings and then into the mold we go. Up next is the fun part, the first in. And this is the part that I think I love the most with um, some of my soaps. I just absolutely love Preston. It's just so soothing for me. Next, I will just be doing some extra fancy stuff on the top to give it some color and character and um, yeah, some glitter as well. And that really is how I made this soap. And then I cut the bars really, really huge, like really huge. These bars, when I at, at the time when I cut them, they were about um, eight ounces, but now they've lost about say 0.4. And so they're about 7.5 ounces now. So they're actually really, really big. I also did take off those hearts because the hearts are, were, you know, they were pretty dry. And so they didn't really stick properly to the soap. And so they kept falling off. So I just took off all of them. And so you see the final bars didn't have those hearts on there. I really hope you enjoyed watching my very first video from my soap making series. Yes, I know I have a video on how I made like my oat and honey soap for my baby and myself, but this is my actual first official 
video and that's what you can see because we know my um, channel has just transitioned into a soap eating channel because that's what I absolutely love so thank you so much for watching this I really hope you learned something and I hope you found this helpful and you can purchase my soaps on my website it's www.premiumsuds.com thanks for watching guys have a great day